So uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. So uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's always a pleasure to uh, teach. And uh, we have uh, seen very, very nice teachers and uh, like Professor Seti. And uh, I'm just trying to follow the steps of uh, Professor Seti. And in this interval, uh, we're just taking a small tangent from our uh, usual, you know, home pitch, and that is uh, going on to otology, field of otology. And I thought we'll start temple bone detection workshops uh, in Hyderabad since we have started our uh, Royal Pearl Hospital in Hyderabad. So we'll be having around six centers very soon in Hyderabad. And uh, we welcome you all to this wonderful first temple bone dissection workshop. And uh, we had the privilege of having one of the doins of uh, the world, none other than Professor Dharambir Seti. And Professor Seti is my teacher. And he is one of the global figures renowned in uh, uh, rhinology, skull base. However, in fact, I uh, have the pleasure of, or we have the pleasure of listening to him uh, talk about the anatomical perspectives and radiological correlation of the temporal bone. And whatever he speaks will be very, very clear. It will reach directly into the uh, thalamus, hypothalamus of every individual. So that's the way he actually teaches from the heart directly to the brain of every student. Without much ado, thank you very much, Professor, for accepting our invitation and uh, giving the lecture for our first temporal bone dissection course. And I hope that uh, we will have you in every temporal bone dissection course as long as I uh, do it. Thank you so much, sir. Over to you. <laughs> okay, Janki, thank you so much for your uh, very fine intro introduction, actually. Uh, so once again, my apologies for the delay. Everything was working pretty well till about uh, uh, 20 minutes ago. And then suddenly my uh, PC crashed and now I am on to uh, the Mac that I have, which I haven't used for a while. So um, uh, there are going to be some teething problems here, all right? So thank you, uh, Janki, for uh, inviting me and or giving me an opportunity to uh, talk to you about, I mean, I've always been talking about uh, paranasal sinuses, how to read the CT scan on paranasal sinuses, but things have changed so much in the past uh, uh, 20, 20, 30 years or so. When I started, uh, you know, um, uh, reading the paranasal sinuses CT scans, it was three millimeter cut, and we used to have all those, uh, you know, um, uh, mount them onto the uh, X ray viewer and see uh, them systematically. But things have changed so much now. We have a whole lot of data that you can just feed into the computer, into a DICOM viewer, and you can play around like you're playing a video game and uh, uh, study the anatomy. It's like, honestly, it's like a video game. It has changed the game completely. So without much ado, I'll go uh, straight to the point here. Uh, okay. uh, first of all, um, uh, my name is uh, B.S. Sethi. Like they say, my name is Khan and I'm not a terrorist. So similarly, my name is Sethi and I'm not an autologist. Uh, this course is attended for uh, residents in ENT and uh, PG students interested in auto uh, autology and may not be suitable for uh, experienced uh, ENT surgeons or autologists. So viewer description is advised. And if you're really trained in, um, uh, as a trained autologist, you find, might find it very well boring. So um, I would like to dedicate this talk to um, the great uh, Professor um, uh, Roton, Albert Roton, who, uh, whom I had the opportunity to meet several times uh, in the, um, uh, during uh, this lifetime. Unfortunately, Professor Roton uh, passed on around uh, six years ago in, uh, in uh, uh, 2016. And um, every time I listened to his uh, lectures during the academy meetings, I was simply amazed by this man. I missed the opportunity to uh, uh, visit his center in the uh, University of Florida, uh, Jacksonville. Um, and it's something that I regret today. But uh, his uh, legacy lives on because his uh, lectures and the slides and everything is available online. All you have to do is just log in and he's right there uh, right there for you. SAT is still present. So that's uh, Professor Albert Roton. Uh, so the the uh, part one, actually not part two of this um, uh, uh, the uh, course today or uh, the instructional course is uh, uh, 
uh, talking about basic temporal bone anatomy, and then we will go on to uh, um, uh, the uh, talking about uh, radiological correlation. I actually had a part three, which was like more of a hands-on um, uh, uh, use of uh, Dicom viewers to study three-dimensional anatomy, but unfortunately my PC is not working and uh, that uh, Dicom viewer doesn't work on the Mac. So we'll have to leave that for uh, some other time. So let's uh, go uh, further ahead. Uh, the temporal bone is actually a very interesting bone. I think second to uh, sphenoid uh, um, uh, the bone, I think is the most complicated bone in the entire human body. First of all, it is uh, angled at 45 degrees, not even uh, coronally uh, oriented. And secondly, almost every cranial nerve in the body, except for first and the second, are related to the temporal bone. Third, fourth, and sixth pass over the Peter's apex. Seventh and eighth literally run through it. Ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth are associated with the juggler uh, foramen and also associated with the uh, temporal bone. So it is a really amazing um, uh, structure. And it is basically located in such a way in the cranium that it it is uh, related to the um, middle cranial fossa as well as to the posterior cranial fossa. So it occupies mostly about uh, two thirds of the skull base. And any one of the skull base surgeon, whether you do skull base, uh, whether you do autology or not, you've got to be very familiar with temporal bone anatomy. So here you can see that uh, the uh, the um, uh, the temporal bone has um, uh, basically. Uh, 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 suture to um, has relation to is attached to the parietal bone is attached to the uh, to the um, uh, to the greater ring of the sphenoid and to the occipital bone. So these are the three bones that the uh, temporal bone is attached to. Let's look at um, the um, uh, this uh, pictures here, and you can see this uh, this this is the temporal bone which fits in in a wedge like a wedge between the greater ring of the sphenoid and the uh, uh, and the uh, occipital bone, and uh, uh, the <clears throat> it divides basically the uh, is divided into anterior cranial fossa, which extends from the uh, uh, frontal um, uh, here to the um, uh, lesser wing of the sphenoid, and the middle cranial fossa, which extends from the left wing of the sphenoid to this pet, uh, uh, petrous ridge of the temporal bone, and the posterior cranial fossa, which extends from the uh, posterior uh, from, from this uh, pet, uh, petrosal ridge to this. Uh, a transverse sinus here. So the temporal bone is related to both the uh, uh, middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa. And this is the uh, inferior surface of the temporal bone. And we'll talk about that a little later. So we're going to discuss about uh, this uh, anterior uh, relationship, anterior surface, the posterior surface, and the inferior surface, and a little bit about the lateral surface of the uh, temporal bone with a view of uh, being able to identify all the anatomical landmarks on the CT scan. The, the talk today is mainly on how we correlate temporal bone anatomy uh, with the CT, <clears throat> with the radiological anatomy, and not about uh, approaches uh, as uh, to the uh, uh, posterior cranial fossa or middle cranial fossa, uh, et cetera. So let me go on to the next slide here. So this is actually a, a, a human skull that I have in my clinic. I use it at almost every day. And you can see how nicely the, uh, the temporal bone is wedged inside between the greater ring of the sphenoid and the ostral bone. And this is the undersurface or the inferior, uh, inferior surface of the temporal bone. So let me go on here. So, uh, so temporal bone is attached anteriorly to the uh, um, to the greater ring of the sphenoid right here, and this is, uh, this suture is called the uh, uh, sphenotemporal suture or sphenosquamous suture because it's attached to the squamous bone here. So um, this suture actually runs all the way from the skull base right up to this area here, which is called the terion, and this is the uh, the um, uh, uh, the zygomatic process. Of the squamous part of the temporal bone, which comes anteriorly and it is attached to the uh, zygoma, forming the zygomatico temporal uh, suture, as you can see here. Now, I'm told that there are at least about 34 uh, sutures in the temporal bone, but if you can understand about seven or eight of them and identify them on uh, 
on the CT scan, that's good enough already because you won't be able to really identify all the 34 of them. Okay? So this is a zygomatical temporal future. And uh, this area here, here you can see this is the parietal bone has been added in. And now this is the coronal uh, suture here. Number one is the coronal suture. Number two here is the frontal uh, sphenoid suture. The frontal bone and this is the sphenoid bone. Now this suture is very important to the neurosurgeon because a very important landmark. And any burr hole that they make in here will expose not only the anterior cranial fossa, but also the orbit. So if we have pathology that is extending from the uh, uh, orbit to the frontal uh, to the anterior cranial fossa, this is where they make the uh, 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 craniotomy, and uh, that gives you a very nice exposure. So the uh, this uh, uh, the number three here is the frontal zygomatic suture. The, this is the frontal bone and zygoma, and number four here is the uh, sphenozygomatic suture, and number five here we already spoke about it earlier is the sphenosperma suture. And number six here is the parietotemporal suture. The coronal suture actually is also very important to the neurosurgeon because behind it, just three meter, three uh, centimeter posterior, the posterior to it is the pre uh, motor cortex. Now, uh, the infratemporal fossa is basically uh, these are the boundaries of the infratemporal fossa, uh, which is limited uh, uh, medially by all these four bones here the greater ring of the sphenoid, the, uh, uh, the uh, parietal bone, the uh, temporal bone, uh, the, and the uh, frontal bone here. And it basically, the main uh, contents of the, and is limited laterally by the uh, zygomatic arch. The contents of the uh, temporal fossa is basically the temporal is muscle, and vessels and nerves, etc. Now this little area where all the sutures meet, where the coronal suture, the frontozygomatic suture and this prytosperma uh, uh, suture and this uh, spinosperma suture, it is called the pterion. It's a very important area because the uh, one of the branches of the middle meningeal artery runs around this area. And any any uh, trauma in this area will then cause an epidural um, hematoma and also is a very important uh, surgical landmark for the neurosurgeons. And the reason we call it the pterion is it is because it is named after a Greek god called the Pyrion, who actually had wings on, uh, attached to this part of the uh, cranium. Now, uh, let's look at how the temporal bone actually attaches itself or is uh, um, wedges itself between the uh, uh, sphenoid and the occiput. Uh, this arrow here shows you the basic sphenoid junction, uh, which is actually um, uh, uh, synchondrosis. Let me just see if I can move this. Okay, this is a synchronous which is completed at the age of about 30 or so. And this entire surface is called the clivus. And uh, this uh, green um, uh, foramen that you see here is actually the um, uh, foramen spinosum because it's lateral to uh, the foramen ovale that you see here. And there's one foramen here which we see uh, medial to the uh, foramen ovale. Any guesses what it is? If not, we'll talk about that later. Now this is the attachment of the uh, uh, greater uh, of the sphenoid bone to the occiput bone, and this is the basic sphenoid junction. Um, and this is um, um, uh, the entire area from here downwards is the clivus, which is very important. We'll talk about that later. So here the uh, temporal bone has been added in, and what we see here are a few suture lines, which is important. This is the squamo, this is the spino, and this is squamous bone. Spino squamous. Uh, 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 switcher line here. And let me see, we'll talk about that a little bit. And this is, you can see here, the temporal bone has been wedged in. This is the anterior view. Uh, this is the occipital bone. And here, parietal bone has been added in. And here you see, this is the uh, 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 petrous uh, bone that has been added in. Uh, this is the greater ring of the, sp uh, the sphenoid bone. This is the occipital bone. And this is the uh, temporal bone that has been added in. That's the petrous bone. So let's see here. Now this structure that you see here is the posterior most part of the of the um, greater ring of the sphenoid, which is called the sphenoid osteo. That's sorry, sphenoidal spine. Now lateral to the sphenoid spine, this suture that you see is is the sphenosquamous suture, and medial to the sphenoid spine, uh, this is the pterion. We already talked about that. And medial to the sphenoid spine, that suture that you see here is called the spino. 
is the sphenoid and this is the petrous bone sphenopetrosal suture. <clears throat> and right here, this uh, tongue shaped um, um, uh, 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 pony protuberance that you see is called the lingula, and this is the medial petrosal process. And these are actually the landmarks where the uh, internal carotid artery actually enters uh, and becomes the paraclival artery. Below this would be the uh, ferron lesrum. And uh, this is a very important landmark here where the um, uh, ligament is attached from the petrous uh, apex to the, to, the, uh, to the lingula here called the petro um, uh, lingual ligament, which is a landmark uh, for the, um, uh, where the uh, petrous carotid ends and the cavernous carotid uh, start. So this is the petro lingual uh, ligament. Now this foramen that we are talking about is actually the, guess what? There's only one foramen which is lat, uh, medial to the uh, foramen valley, and that is the median. And it is right below, you can see here, slightly inferior and medial to the uh, foramen rotundum up there. Now this is the body of the uh, sphenoid, uh, and uh, this is the petrous. Uh, this future line that you see here is called the petro occipital, petro-occipital future. Very interesting because the petro-occipital future actually harbors the uh, inferior petrosal sinus, which comes down inferiorly and, and, uh, and ends in the jugular fossa here. It actually ends in the, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the pars nervosa. We'll talk about that later, not into the, the jugular uh, forum here. The other future line here, you can't see it. We'll talk about that a little uh, later. Now let's talk about the, uh, the anterior surface first before we come on to the inferior surface. So this is the, the um, uh, petro-occipital, um, uh, occipital petrosal, you can call it, but it's called petro-occipital future line. And you can see it's coming down here and ending into the uh, nervous, uh, 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 partial nervosa of the jugular uh, foramen. So uh, this is the inferior surface of the uh, temporal bone. Can see here uh, just uh, and let me see over oh, yeah. so you can see here this is the um, uh, zygomatic process it's the fundal and this bone that you see here is actually the uh, the tympanic plate and this is the mastoid process uh, this is the petrous apex this is the carotid uh, canal and this is the uh, jugular foramen uh, the contribution of the jugular foramen is both from the occipital bone and from the uh, petrous uh, uh, and from the petrous part of the temporal bone. Now, uh, this is a, a, a temporal bone that was actually given to me uh, in 1987 by Professor George Browning when I was um, uh, on an HMD scholarship in Glasgow for my uh, examination. And uh, he was an orthologist and he had an incredible uh, collection of temporal bones. And he gave me this bone to study the temporal bone anatomy in 1987, that was the year. And I still kept it today and always look at it. It's amazing the way this uh, bone has been dissected. It's a dry bone. And uh, it's uh, most have been laser dissected. It wasn't dissected with the laser, but by a technician. Because this suture, this, uh, this uh, section that you see here goes right through the, uh, uh, the uh, middle, uh, middle ear, separating the uh, medial uh, wall of the uh, uh, middle ear from the lateral wall. I'll show you that later. Uh, so I won't go through the details here. This is a squamous part, the zygomatic process, this is a tympanic plate, uh, this is a mastoid process. And uh, yeah, so let's look at the uh, uh, inner surface here. And here you can see inside here, the bone has been beautifully dissected. And I want to share this with you today because I have been uh, studying my anatomy from this bone for the past, you know, the, for almost like uh, uh, 40 years or so. And uh, you can see here, these are the markings of the uh, middle malangial artery that comes up from the foramen uh, spinosum. And uh, this is actually uh, the frontal uh, 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 branch of the middle malangial artery. There's also a parietal branch. And this exactly, this comes and uh, is very close to the carrion. So if any injury in that part of the uh, skull base uh, or the skull can result into a epidural hematoma. So what you see here is a sigmoid sinus, and this is where the uh, sigmoid sinus starts and it ends here. This is sigmoid sinus very closely related. And uh, this is the tagment, these are the mastoid air cells. But what you see here is the, the arcuate eminence. And uh, I'm sure you all will agree 
uh, that this is the uh, uh, superior uh, uh, semicircular canal. Now, which end of the superior semicircular, uh, semicircular canal is the ampullary end? This or this? A or B? I'm sure most will say it's A. Why is it A? Because this part of the semicircular canal is going to meet with the ampullary end of the lateral semicircular canal and form the vestibule. And here we can see that um, uh, the, this is the lip of the uh, uh, internal acoustic meters, uh, which has been dissected partially. And you can see a little bit of the, uh, um, of the uh, um, um, cochlea, there's uh, uh, effects of the cochlea, apical cochlea that has been released here. And this yellow uh, discoloration that you see is a labyrinth part of the uh, facial nerve. I'll, I'll show you that. A uh, little uh, later. Let me show you here. Now, this is uh, uh, the uh, another view uh, from the front of the um, uh, semicircular canal. So this is the uh, this is the um, uh, superior semicircular canal, ampullary end, non-ampullary end, non-ampullary end will join with the um, uh, non-ampullary end of the uh, posterior semicircular canal. And what does this form? It forms the crust canal. And this canal that you see in the center of the semicircular canal. I'm sure you know what it is. It is the subarcuate canal, which harbors the um, uh, arcuate artery. Arcuate artery is a branch of the uh, uh, labyrinth artery. And this is how the mesh cavity communicates directly with the uh, posterior cranial fossa. And any infection from the um, uh, mesh cavity can spread into the posterior cranial fossa uh, to this uh, subarcuate uh, canal. Uh, so this is the, um, uh, we have the um, petrous um, uh, carotid artery. This is the petrous apex where the carotid artery opens up. So, so here was the foramen spinosum. You soon don't see that any, anywhere. So let me go on to the next slide here. Okay. So here you'll be able to see almost all the um, semicircle canals. So this is the superior semicircle canal. This is a lateral semicircle canal. And lateral has its own um, opening. What is interesting here, this is the superior semicircular canal. This is the lateral semicircular canal. And the ampullary end of the lateral semicircular canal, which is here, is going to team up with the uh, ampullary end of the superior semicircular canal, and they're going to form the vestibule somewhere here. Whereas this <coughs> lateral semi, this is the posterior, so this is the lateral semicircular canal. The ampullary, the non ampullary end of the uh, lateral semicircular canal has its own opening into the vestibule. Now, this is the posterior semicircular canal, which is actually hugging, will hug around the, uh, the, um, uh, uh, the lateral semicircular canal and will go down. And uh, this is a non-ampullary um, non end. And this non-ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal and the superior semicircular canal will form a common, uh, 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 common crust, uh, which will be figure right here. So um, if this is the posterior semicircular canal right here, which I just said, then what is the structure right here? Now there's only one structure which is inferior to the posterior semicircular canal. Remember that because all this we are going to correlate uh, with the uh, CT scan later, and that is the any guesses so far? That is the endolymphatic sac. Okay, that's where it's going to be, right? So we'll we'll see that later on the CT scan. And you may have noticed a little small. This is the um, um, this is the um, uh, basically the uh, fissure nerve, the labyrinth part of the fissure nerve. Once here, I'll show you that in more detail. But you may notice that little probe here, right here. This probe actually, I will show you in a different um, uh, picture here, has been passed through the uh, from from the round window and is actually coming out from the um, apical uh, cochlea right here. I'll show you that later. So indicating that this is where the cochlea is going to be. And that is the um, lip of the internal acoustic meters. And these are some uh, uh, petrous apex air cells. So let me just go on to a different view here. So once again, superior semicircular canal, and this is the apical cochlea, and this is the labyrinth part of the uh, <coughs> of the uh, 
Okay, should not. Now here you see this is from the view from above, and you can see this is the uh, apical cochlea, uh, and this probe that I showed you earlier coming out here, uh, and this is the horizontal crest. You don't see the vertical crest here because that is somewhere here, but you see the horizontal crest. So above the horizontal crest here is the labyrinth part of the facial nerve. Below the horizontal crest here would be, they say facial up, coke down. I don't really believe on that because if you know your anatomy, you don't need a, a pseudonyms. Then you don't need to remember uh, formulas and not to remember. So anatomy is more important because right here is the labyrinth part of the facial nerve, face up. And here is going to be the cochlear nerve, which is go, going to go into the cochlea. And this is the cochlea right here. So what happens here? The genital ganglia is going to be here. So what happens here? Genital ganglia is going, up, going to give the rise to greater superficial petrosal nerve, GSPN as we call it. And that is going to run over the apex of the cochlea here, apical cochlea, and go and run into this groove and join the... Um, 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 the um, carotid artery and um, collecting the deep uh, the uh, the um, sympathetic fibers from the uh, uh, internal carotid artery. It is going to go into the median canal and form the median nerve. So a beautiful, I think, dissection here demonstrating the uh, apex of the uh, cochlea, the labyrinth part of the uh, uh, of the uh, facial nerve and the superior semicircular canal. Let me now go on to the next uh, slide here. Again, something very similar, uh, but you have a better view of the cochlea um, here, and you can see the modulus in the center right here. And this is the horizontal, horizontal crest here. And this is where the cochlear nerve is going to be. You do not see the superior and the inferior vestibular nerves because they, that part of the uh, internal meters has not been uh, dissected. Now, this is the inferior surface of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, of the temporal bone. Uh, this is the jugular uh, 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 fossa, and that is the carotid artery. And what do you think about this probe that has been passed here? Where is it going? That is the inferior tympanic Canaliculus. And this is the probe has been passed into that canaliculus where the Jacobson's nerve actually enters there and appears in the inferior tympanic cavity and runs onto the uh, promontory. I'll show you that later. So now here you can see that the, the, the section that I showed you has been opened like a book. And here you have the uh, lateral wall of the um, middle ear, and here you have the medial wall. Of the middle ear. So let's look at the lateral wall of the middle ear, you know, the tympanic membrane. Uh, and this is the uh, uh, the tensor, uh, the canal of the stretching tube, and the tensor uh, tympanic canal, as you can see here. And this is the uh, uh, malleus, handle of, uh, handle of the malleus, head of the malleus. And this is the uh, body of the, uh, of the incus. The short process of the incus is right here. And this is the uh, long process of the incus and the lenticular process of the incus. So this is the uh, tensor tympani tendon, which will actually insert onto the uh, malleus, as you know. And the short process of the incus is pointing towards the facial nerve. You don't see that here because the facial nerve is actually uh, on, the, uh, on the medial wall of the, uh, uh, of the middle ear. So let me show you. This is once again the uh, lateral wall, but we'll go and look at the uh, Medial wall here. So this is the medial wall, and you see a beautiful that uh, you know demonstration here. This is where the uh, uh, the facial nerve comes out here. Cochlea is going to be up there, and uh, runs around here over the oval window. This is the oval window, and then this the forms a second genu here, and then comes out to the stylometroid foramen. So this is the fallopian canal actually, and this is remember I showed you the probe uh, that has been passed from the inferior uh, tympanic caniculus and it will come here and is running onto the promontory as the Jacobson's nerve. And this is passing on and forming the, what, what nerve does it form? In feet, there is a deep, greater superficial deep petrosal nerve and there is a lesser superficial petrosal nerve. So this is the lesser superficial petrosal nerve. 
Both are different destinations. We'll talk about that later. And this probe that you see here has been passed through the round window, and that is what was emerging here through the effects of the uh, apical turn of the cochlea to that. Here. So this is the round window. So look at this shape, how the cochlea is lying. It is lying in a different, it's not like vertical, it is at an angle. The head of the cochlea is toward the middle, whereas the base of the cochlea is uh, lateral. So uh, let, uh, in the next slide here, you can see the entire floccal panel has been dissected. And um, you hear uh, this, and this is the um, uh, oval window and the round window is below here. And what is this structure here? This is going to be the, this is going to be the lateral semicircular canal. Okay, and you can see this, uh, I have shaded it green, you'll see that later. And these are all the mastoid uh, air cells. Now, beautiful demonstration of the um, carotid canal here, going from, um, uh, from here. And look, it's also very interesting with something that you'll see on the, um, on the um, uh, CT scan later on. The carotid artery here, the petrous carotid artery, is related very closely with the, uh, with the cochlea, whereas the jugular foramen is more related to the vestibular system. You'll see that later on the uh, CT scan. Now, this is a close-up view of the same slide here. This is the uh, uh, probe going through the round window. This is the uh, uh, oval window. This is the floppian uh, uh, canal. This is the uh, uh, lateral semicircle canal. And this is the Jacobson's nerve and lateral lesser superficial petrosal nerve. This groove that you see here is for the greater superficial petrosal nerve and the genital ganglion would be somewhere here. Genital ganglion would be here and uh, facial nerve passes uh, there. This way in this direction, where uh, the greater superficial petrosal nerve passes anteriorly there. Now this is, I don't think this video is going to show because uh, this was shown in videos. It was the, the very nice video of the carotid canal um, showing the, the dimension of the carotid canal, but it doesn't work on the Mac, it should have worked on the uh, PC. In any case, let me just continue. All right, so with that, let us, uh, that background, let's now um, uh, go on to the, uh, uh, looking at the anterior surface, the surface that is really anterior surface of the petrous bone, which is related to the middle uh, cranial fossa. So uh, <clears throat> this is, what is this? This is the, so, uh, this is a groove for the superior petrosal sinus, right? And these are the, the fifth nerve. And this is the ophthalmic. The this is the, any guesses? Maxillary. And this is the mandibular. These are the three branches. Now here, one thing that you always, you cannot miss on the CT scan if you're reading is, foramen ovale and foramen spinosum. And everything seems to be related to that on the CT scan. So this is the foramen ovale right here, and this is the foramen spinosum. So let me just go up here, let's just see here, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's try to see, what is C here? Now, the, the, uh, uh, the trigeminal or the fifth nerve lies in a concavity that is called the cavum, and that concavity is called the trigeminal depression. So relatively, this part of the bone is slightly elevated and is, the C is trigeminal eminence. Now, we know this is the greater superficial petrosal nerve, nerve, and we know that the greater superficial petrosal nerve is very closely related from our previous uh, uh, anatomy, very closely related to the apex of the cochlea. So the B has to be cochlear. And immediately lateral to the cochlea, you have to have the uh, internal acoustic meters. So this is the metal depression that you see here. D has to be the cochlea. Uh, so what is A then? Well, if then A is the, this is what? Peromen spinosum. So what runs in this direction? Station tube. So the A has to be leading to the station tube. And E is the segment tympana. So let's see if this all this is correct. That's the greater superficial petrosal now. And B here is the cochlea. So when drilling here, one has to be very careful. This is something that the neurosurgeon will talk about in the middle of the process. So 
so that you don't injure the cochlea. And uh, so we have already talked about that, what the structures are and see, should you here. So this is the cochlea right here. And this was the, uh, uh, the internal prostate neuters. And you will see that it is the porous sphere is much wider than the fundus here. This is the porous. And you can see all these structures inside the internal prostate meter. Um, this is the facial nerve right here. This is the genital ganglion, greater superficial petrosal nerve going right there underneath the um, uh, trigeminal and above the carotid artery. And this is the uh, tympanic part of the uh, of the facial nerve. What is this nerve here? That is the intermediate nerve or the nervous intermediate, as we call it, which carries, what fibers does it carry? It carries the, both the uh, sensory and the spiritomotor fibers, we'll talk about that later. And this is the um, superior uh, vestibular nerve, and below that will be the inferior vestibular nerve, and below the um, uh, facial nerve here will be the cochlear nerve. And you can see very nicely the horizontal crest here, which separates the cochlear nerve and the inferior vestibular nerve from the uh, facial and the superior vestibular nerve. We also have a nice, very nice dissection here of the superior semicircular canal, which is right here. And this is the lateral semicircular canal, and this is the posterior semicircular canal. Note how the posterior semicircular canal is hugging around and going inferior to it. And it is this is the amplory end, which is going inferior to it, and is going to end up in the vestibular. Vestibule. Uh, we also uh, can have uh, here, this is, uh, well, I won't talk too much about this, this is the, uh, the ossicles right here. This may be the stapes step right there. But let's move on to the next slide. So you can see here, this all the dissection has been completed. You have uh, the internal caustic meters and you have the station tube and you have the external outer meters. And they form like a wide kind of a relationship here like a gentle, very gentle Y. Now, what is this structure right here, right next to the foramen spinosum or the middle meningeal artery? What is this structure? This is the canal of the tensor tympani. Where does the tensor tympani arise from? It arises from the uh, cartilage of the uh, station tube and a little bit from the uh, uh, greater wing of the sphenoid. And it has its own canal, a very long canal, because sometimes this canal can be confused with the facial nerve, but you've got to remember, that the facial nerve is above. If you're looking at the, um, uh, the, um, the axial views, you will see that the, you'll come across the place from superior to inferior. You will see the facial nerve before you see the uh, canal of the tensor tympani. So this is the canal of the tensor tympani. So where does it get its blood supply from? Very convenient. It gets its blood supply from the middle meningeal artery. Where does it get the, its, uh, uh, its motor supply from? Well, very convenient, get it from this nerve here. You don't have to go too far. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, mandibular, the motor branch of the uh, mandibular nerve is very close by, so it supplies the uh, tensor tympani and the same branch that supplies the middle pericoid muscle. And look at it, it's coming here and inserting onto the um, pyramidal em eminence here and it inserts onto the malleus. And this is here is the station uh, tube. So uh, let me go on to the next slide here. So this is the, uh, the pyramidal eminence and that would be the, uh, the uh, tensor uh, tympani tendon. Uh, so here you can see the cochlea has been uh, dissected and see what a close relationship the GSPN has with the cochlea, right, with the apex of the cochlea. So a very important landmark. And um, you can see this is the apex of the cochlea, this is the middle, uh, uh, medial uh, turn of the co cochlea, and um, this is the foramen spinosum once again, and that's the foramen well. <clears throat> this is, of course, the uh, mastoid cavity here, the superior uh, uh, petrosal sinuses like that, and that's the, the for your uh, again orientation. This is the posterior cranial fossa, and this is the middle cranial uh, fossa. That's the uh, tensor tympani. So let's go on here, uh, more dissection and a close up here. This is the medial turn of the cochlea, GSPN right here, and the rest of the structures are about the same. This is just a close-up view of what I just mentioned just now. And this is the apical turn of the cochlea. Now coming down here, what is this? This is the vestibule. 
which is formed by the ampullary end of the superior semicircular canal and the ampullary end of the lateral semicircular canal. This is lateral semicircular canal, superior semicircular canal, posterior semicircular canal. One thing you're going to find in this lecture today is a lot of repetition. And I think it's not necessarily a bad thing because when you repeat something several times, you tend to remember it. So let's uh, go on to the next slide here. Here, the carotid artery has been removed and you have a very beautiful view of the facial nerve coming here. And this is a labyrinth part of the facial nerve, genital ganglion and GSPN. And this is the superior vestibular nerve and that is supplies the vestibule here. So here you can see this is the ampullary end of the superior vestibular canal and this is the ampullary end of the uh, lateral vestibular canal. This is the non-ampullary end of the uh, superior semicircular canal, and this is the non-ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal. So what does this make it? This makes it the crusk immune, and this is going to be the uh, ampullary end of the, uh, uh, this is going to lead on to the ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal, which is hugging around the uh, uh, lateral semicircular canal. But what is this arrow? What is this nerve right here? Can anybody guess? I think that this is the quadra tympani coming between the um, uh, incus and the malleus right here and disappearing into a small canaliculus here into the uh, infratemporal uh, uh, sorry, into the uh, petrotympanic uh, fissure and will go into the infratemporal fossa and join the um, lingual nerve uh, to uh, reach its uh, destination. So this is the vestibule right here. And uh, this is the, sorry, my, my apologies, that was the cochlea. And this is the uh, vestibule right here. And these are the semicircular canal. That is the uh, uh, internal caustic mutus. And notice the porous is much wider than the fundus. The fundus is actually a very narrow. And this is the, uh, uh, the fundus right here. This is the, what they call it, the vertical crest that separates the uh, labyrinth part of the uh, facial nerve from the superior uh, vestibular nerve. Here, both the, uh, uh, this is a different perspective now, we are looking from posteriorly. So what, what this is the uh, uh, anterior right now, and this is the posterior. And this uh, shelf here actually really separates the, the two. <clears throat> uh, this is the vertical crest, and this is the horizontal crest. So this is the facial nerve, this is the cochlear nerve, this is the superior, uh, vestibular nerve, and this is the inferior vestibular nerve. If this had been reflected wide, you maybe have been able to see the, um, the, um, the, the nerve that, uh, what do they call the nerve, I'll come to me later, uh, that supplies the uh, uh, ampulla of the uh, posterior vestibular, uh, post, uh, posterior semicircular canal. So facial, superior vestibular, inferior vestibular, popular. Now, looking at it, we are still looking from above in the middle cranial fossa. That's the facial nerve. And what artery is this? This is the uh, internal caustic meters. The, uh, uh, and uh, what artery is this? This is the arcuate artery, which is a branch of the labyrinth artery. This is a labyrinth artery. And what artery is this? This is the uh, labyrinth artery, which is a branch itself of the uh, ICA. Uh, anterior inferior cerebellar artery. And you can see um, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, seventh, eighth nerve right here. Now, this is not the seventh and eighth nerve. This is already lower. And here is the jugular foramen is here. So these are the ninth, tenth, and eleventh nerve. We'll talk about that a little. Uh, ICA is related both to the jugular foramen and to the uh, uh, internal acoustic meters. Now, here uh, the internal acoustic meters have been drilled, and you see a beautiful view. Of the, uh, the actually the uh, the uh, porous is much wider, but the drilling they have made the uh, fundus to be slightly wider so it's better demonstrate the anatomy here. So here you can see this is the nervous intermedius, this is the facial nerve, and this is the superior and the inferior vestibular nerve. Below there may be the uh, this is the crest horizontal crest, and below that may be the cochlear nerve. So that's the facial intermedius, and here. Uh, you have seen very nicely, you can see the entire horizontal crest, and this is the Bills bar or the vertical crest, that is the facial nerve. Below that will be the cochlear nerve, this is the superior vestibular nerve, and the inferior vestibular nerve will be there. 
So that is what nerve is that? That is the superior vestibular nerve. What nerve is this? This is the inferior vestibular nerve. And what nerve is that? That is the cochlear nerve. Now, this is a beauty. Now, let's go on to the posterior surface. And I think this is a remarkable, wonderful uh, uh, picture uh, showing the posterior uh, surface of the, uh, of the pitreous temporal bone. You see the superior petrosal sinus very nicely here. And you see the inferior petrosal sinus very nicely here. And these are both, from, they both communicate with the cavernous sinus. And the inferior petrosal sinus actually terminates in the, uh, remember, in the part nervosa, not the part vascularis. And you can see all the nerves that are related to the, um, uh, to the petrous uh, uh, bone right here, or the temporal bone. You can see here, this is the fifth nerve, this is the sixth nerve, uh, this is the third nerve, third, four, uh, third, sixth, fifth, and this is the, uh, the seventh and eighth, and this is the jugular foramen, ninth, uh, 10, 11, and 12th nerve. They're all related to the posterior part of posterior surface of the uh, uh, of the temple of the petrous bone. So uh, this is how it looks like. So what are these structures right here? What is this? This is the internal caustic meters. We already discussed that. And what structure is this? This structure is just below the posterior semicircular canal, which is going to be right here. So what is this structure? Remember this because this is very important uh, from the CT scan point of view. This is the Endolymphatic sac is going to be coming here. You'll see that later. And this is the uh, jugular foramen. And the contribution of the caterous uh, temporal bone to the jugular foramen is slightly jagged, whereas that of the uh, occipital bone is very smooth. But we can see we'll talk about that a little later. So this is the posterior surface. And just like I told you, uh, this is the internal caustic uh, meters right here. I won't talk about the nerves. We have discussed this several times. Uh, this is the fifth nerve in the uh, metal scape right here. And uh, coming back here, this is the uh, uh, arcuate, um, uh, subarcuate, uh, or the arcuate artery. And this is, what is this? This is the crust uh, commune. Okay, let me just go through and uh, orientate you a little bit. So this is the arcuate eminence right here. And this is the uh, uh, superior semicircular canal. So this is the crust commune because the superior semicircular canal is meeting up with the non-amplory end of the uh, uh, posterior semicircular canal. This is the posterior semicircular canal, and that is the crust commune, and this is the posterior semicircular canal. So remember, I told you running just below the posterior semicircular canal is going to be the endolymphatic sac. It's going to be, it's a very important uh, landmark uh, for the autologists and the skull base surgeons. And this is the endolymphatic sac. Uh, just anterior to this is the Jugular for is the is the um, uh, I, IJV or the jugular foramen, and this is what I was telling you. Look how closely the jugular uh, foramen is related to the vestibular system, where, whereas the um, the um, uh, carotid artery is more related to the cochlea, uh, being anterior. So this is the pars nervosa. You can see here indeed, and this is the pars uh, vascularis. This is the uh, uh, ninth nerve that is going inside the pars nervosa, and this is the 10th, 11th nerve, which goes to the pars uh, vascularis. <clears throat> and this is the inferior uh, petrosal sinus, which is terminating in the pars uh, nervosa. And this uh, is the internal caustic meters. We already discussed that. And uh, right here, again, uh, beautiful demo here. This is the ninth nerve um, in the pars nervosa. And what is this? Hopefully, it is supposed to be here. Sorry. Uh, this is the nerve that is the supplies the um, uh, uh, posterior semicircular uh, canal. Forget the name of this nerve. Has come to me. Yes. All right. So that is the cochlear nerve, and I think. Uh, but this the reason I put this slide is so how beautiful the uh, um, the the pitreous part of the um, uh, carotid arteries. This is where it comes in, takes a turn, and then ends up into the. Um, this is the um, um, the sixth cranial nerve, right? Uh, sorry, the third cranial nerve. Sorry, it is not a third. It's the sixth cranial nerve, right here, and this is the fifth cranial nerve, and uh, right here, this is the fourth cranial nerve, 
and this are the seventh and the eighth node here, which is spoken about the ninth and tenth year. So all these nodes are very closely related to the future part of the uh, temporal bone. Beautiful dissection of the vestibule. So how many openings do we have in the vestibule? This is the entire vestibule. Now this is the this probe is that of the superior semicircular canal, the ampullary end of the superior semicircular canal, and this is the non-ampullary end of the superior semicircular canal with the non-ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal forming the crust commune there. Now this is the ampullary end of the lateral semicircular canal, and this is a non-ampullary end of the lateral semicircular canal, and there's the uh, uh, ampullary end of the uh, uh, of the uh, semicircular canal. Yes, this just came back to me. This is a this is a singular nerve, which is part of the inferior vestibular nerve that supplies the ampulla of the posterior semicircular canal, and this is the vestibule. So in overall, there are seven openings inside the vestibule: one, two, three, four, five, six, and including the old window, that will be seven. So uh, the, sorry, go back to the previous one. This was the cochlear right here, as you can see. And uh, this is the, uh, uh, what nerve is that tissue? And what nerve is, this is the Bills bar or the vertical press. And that is the um, uh, superior vestibular nerve, like the vestibule. And here is the uh, inferior vestibular nerve. And this nerve that you see here is a singular nerve that supplies the ampulla of the posterior semicircular canal, which is right here. Okay. And that is the oval window. So this is the um, uh, internal acoustic meters. Um, um, I think you have, by now, I think you should be familiar already. Seventh nerve, broke down, there's a cochlear nerve, superior vestibular nerve, inferior vestibular nerve, and this foramen is called the uh, 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 singular nerve. Now coming around to the uh, jugular foramen, um, and uh, you see this is the pars nervosa, and this is the pars uh, vascularis here, and this is a glossopharyngeal nerve, the ninth, 10th, and 11th nerve all lying on the jugular uh, tubercular, as we call it. That's the pars uh, nervosa, and this is the pars uh, vascularis, uh, and that is the uh, ninth and 11th nerve. And below here is the condylar uh, uh, canal. So this is here, this is the inferior petrosal sinus. You see, it's not going to the jugular from it's ending in the pars nervosa right here. So this is the ninth cranial nerve. This is an, uh, and this is the 10th and the 11th cranial nerve. The 12th nerve is below here. This is not the 12th nerve. 12th nerve is below the, uh, the jugular tubercle. It's right here, right this time in the, in the canal, hypoglossal canal. <clears throat> and this is the jugular bulb right here. And that is the 12th nerve. Uh, beautiful dissection here. The entire um, the jugular bulb has been dissected out. So that's the ninth nerve. Coming here, and uh, that is the 10th, and that is the 11th, and this is the 12th nerve coming here in the, in the hypoglossal canal right here. Uh, this is the uh, jugular uh, fossa, and um, this is the ninth nerve. And it says there's some nerve going up here. What nerve is that? Anybody? That is the tympanic branch of the, uh, the glossopharyngeal nerve. Which will, uh, which is also called the Jacobson nerve, into, uh, uh, <clears throat> disappearing into the inferior tympanic canaliculus and will appear in the in the tympanic hypotympanum and run onto the promontory. It carries uh, secretomotor fibers from the inferior salivary nucleus headed for the parotid gland. Okay, and this is the uh, again the uh, pars uh, uh, vascularis. Here you can see the IPS. Uh, ending into the uh, so what nerve is this? Anyone? That is the auricular branch of the vagus, and that is running into the mastoid planiculus towards the facial nerve, and then it will appear um, in uh, 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 exit from the uh, mastoid uh, tympanomastoid suture to supply the skin around the uh, uh, pinna in that particular area. So let's look at the inferior surface uh, here. And uh, this starts, uh, we'll talk about this. We already talked about the structure. So we're going to look at the inferior surface now. A beautiful view of the inferior surface of the sinus. If you can identify a few uh, uh, 
uh, landmarks that will be that will help to orientate you. This is the median canal, and um, and this is formed by the uh, greater superficial petrosal nerve and the deep petrosal nerve. So this is the petrous part of the carotid canal. This is how the carotid artery is entering and going into the petrous bone and going and uh, becoming the uh, and going into the spinoid sinus to become the cavernous. And what structure is this? This is a eustachian tube. And you don't see the foramen spinosum, but this artery is the middle meningeal artery. And this is the foramen ovale with the aortic ganglion. So what is this? This is the uh, styloid foramen. And if this is a styloid foramen, this is the mastoid tip. And this is the mastoid tip. What structure is this? This is the facial nerve. Now, this very interesting nerve, which runs here, is called the auricular temporal nerve. This is one of the branches of the um, uh, of the um, mandibular nerve uh, that carries the spiritobotal fibers to the parotid gland. And um, this, um, so um, uh, it has several branches, but uh, yeah, it gives off several branches to the ear, et cetera, et cetera, but it runs here behind. This is the neck of the mandible. See here, it runs behind the neck of the mandible and then accompanies the superficial uh, temporal vessels to supply the back of the uh, scalp. Now, what is interesting about this is it distributes skeletomotor uh, nerve fibers to the uh, parotid gland. And also, what nerve, what other nerves in the parotid gland? The seventh nerve. So sometimes there are communication between the auricular temporal fibers of the auricular temporal nerve and the facial nerve. And that is the reason sometimes after facial nerve, after um, a surgery of the parotid gland, uh, people tend to get uh, this uh, what syndrome they call that, I can't remember that, where they get a lot of, um, um, you know, uh, hyperesthesia and sweating. So uh, the other importance of this is the, of this communication between the uh, auricular temporal nerve and the facial nerve is that in patients who have squamous cell carcinomas or adenocystic carcinomas or um, melanomas, et cetera, the tumor per perineural spread can take place through the auricular temporal nerve into the um, uh, veil, valley and into the uh, middle cranial fossa from the posterior cranial fossa. So this is a communication channel for perineural spread from the facial nerve and into the uh, into the foramenal valley and vice versa. So these are something that we have to be, so that's the styloid uh, foramen right here. So let me go this, we already talked about it. This is the uh, uh, carotid artery, C2 carotid artery, this is the tube, and this is the styloid um, uh, process and the facial, uh, sorry, the um, uh, facial uh, stello mastoid foramen and the facial nerve coming through it. And this is the hypo, uh, uh, the um, uh, hypoglossal canal. You can see the, um, uh, the, the hypoglossal nerve coming out through that. Okay, and this is the attachment of the uh, rectus, uh, capitus, uh, anterior and lateral, which are important, very important landmarks to identify the uh, canalar, uh, the hypoglossal canal. Uh, this is the hypoglossal canal, which has been dissected out. And now coming to a lateral surface, this is going to be a slightly simple uh, because uh, we, I think all the uh, ENT surgeons are very familiar with the lateral surface. And uh, here uh, the um, mastoid cavity has been drilled out and you have a beautiful view of the sigmoid sinus. Remember that sigmoid sinus is not vertical, but it's almost always at an angle right here. Right? And the sinodural angle is formed not, is formed by the superior petrosal sinus, which you see here, and the angle that is mixed with the sigmoid sinus. That is the true sinodural angle. And what else do you see here? This is the fragmenting penai, uh, which separates it from the middle cranial, uh, uh, middle cranial fossa. And these are the semicircular canal. Which canal is this? This is the posterior semicircular canal. Which canal is this? This is the lateral semicircular canal. So this is important because when you look at the sagittal uh, reconstruction of the CT scan, you're going to see this first. You're going to see the lateral semicircular canal first, and then you're going to see the superior semicircular canal, and only then you will see the uh, sorry posterior semicircular canal, and only then you'll see the superior semicircular canal. Uh, whereas in the axial cuts, you'll see the superior semicircular canal with the first canal that you'll see. Now this is a beautiful uh, dissection here, and uh, this is uh, or this is the, lat uh, the lateral semicircular canal. Which is the ampullary end? This is the ampullary end. This is the non ampullary end. And this is the posterior end. Which is the ampullary end? This is the ampullary end. This is the non ampullary end forming the cross commune uh, with the non ampullary end of the, uh, super, uh, of the superior semicircular canal. 
So this is the cross commune here. And this uh, is the uh, facial nerve uh, or the uh, uh, running here. That is the, uh, 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 the stapedius uh, uh, tendon right here, at stapedial prominence. And this is the order tympani right here. And you are well aware, this is the uh, uh, incurs, the malleus, and this uh, is the uh, lateral semicircular canal. And notice the relationship with the uh, uh, facial nerve. And this is the posterior semicircular canal, which I already really talked about earlier. And this is the mesotympanum. Uh, uh, this is the stretcher tube right here. And that's the incus. Note how the, the short presses of the incus is literally pointing to where the, um, uh, the facial nerve is. And that's the facial nerve. It's a very important landmark uh, for mastoid uh, surgery. That's the stapes, stapedial tendon, and the uh, uh, eminence. And uh, this is the fora tympani. Uh, we already talked about the fora tympani. So, and this is this part is called the facial recess. Uh, which is limited by the uh, uh, by the quadrat and the patient. So that is the oval window, and right this is the round window. And this again, what is this? This is the posterior semicircular canal. So what is this going to be? That is going to be the endolymphatic sac. And beautiful view of the uh, uh, quadrat and coming all the way, running here and coming out to the petro tympanic. Uh, 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 the recess or the sulcus and into the infratemporal fossa to join the uh, lingual nerve and go for a destination. So this is the, what is this? This is not the old window. This is the vestibule. Old window is right here. The stabilar tendon is here. And what nerve is this? So that is the Jacobson nerve running on the uh, promontory. Now, with the first part of the uh, um, anatomy completed, I'm now going to go on to correlating the anatomy. Okay, how do you see? So let me go here very quickly. I think this will take about half an hour or so. And I think before you go on to radiological anatomy, the point I want to make here, it is extremely important that you have a sound knowledge of the, um, of the cross anatomy. Without that, you can't uh, uh, be familiar or know the radiological anatomy. So let me just go here. Um, let's, let's talk about the sutures first. What suture is this? We discussed that. This is the this is the tympanic plate, and this is the squamous. So this is the tympano squamous suture, right? And what happens is squamous suture it runs medially and divides into two. That becomes the petro um, uh, uh, <clears throat> tympanic. This is the petro squamous, uh, uh, the tympano squamous, and this is the uh, so the petro squamous. And this is the petrotympanic suture. It is from here that the the um, uh, tympani emerges. So, can we identify them on the CT scan? Definitely can. You can see it on the um, on the uh, uh, on the axial cuts here. This, this is the uh, uh, tympanosquamous fissure, and you see how it is continuing inside right here. This is the petrotympanic uh, suture, and uh, this is a sagittal reconstruction, and we, exactly what we saw on the. Uh, on the uh, uh, bone, this is the this is a tympanosquamous suture right here. So um, this is the petro squamous suture is basically a suture between the squamous part of the um, uh, temporal bone with the petrous part of the bone. Very difficult to identify, and you can only see it in my experience only on the coronal part. And this is like a step uh, deformity here, right above where the um, uh, uh, malleus says this step deformity that is the petro uh, squamous fissure. And um, <clears throat> so what fissure is this? This is the tympanomastoid fissure. And it is from here that the auricular branch or the aldoman nerve, which is uh, 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 the uh, branch of the uh, uh, vagus emerges and supplies the uh, ear around this area. <clears throat> and you can see it very nicely. This is the juggler foramen here. And you can see this horizontal here going towards the facial nerve. This is the facial nerve. So that is the sulcus. That is the mastoid sulcus through which the um, uh, the uh, the nerve passes towards the facial nerve and comes out through the um, uh, temporal mastoid uh, uh, suture right here and supplies the skin around that area. So what suture is this? This is a squamo spin. This is a spinot bone. This is a squamous bone. So this is a spinosquamous suture. 
and you can identify it here on the CT scan. It is always, this is the, this is the form. Remember I was telling you, these are two very important landmarks, foramen valley and foramen spinosa. So this suture is always lateral to the foramen valley and the foramen uh, uh, spinosa. Now here, what suture is this? This is the spinopetrosal suture right here. And see the spinopetrosal suture and it is always medial to the foramen valley right here. That is the spinopetrosal suture. The importance of this suture is the laboratory where I flat my muscles that are attached to this. Now, what suture line is this? So this is the petrous bone, this is the occipital bone. So this is the petro occipital uh, suture and it harbors the inferior petrosal sinus that goes towards the inferior uh, petrosal, uh, uh, sorry, uh, pars uh, nervosa. This is on the plane and this is onto the skull base, same thing. And you can see it very nicely onto the, uh, on the CT scan here. This is the occipit bone, this is the petrous bone, and this is the petro uh, occipital suture, and is ending up into the inferior uh, petrosal, uh, sorry, uh, the pars uh, uh, nervosa of the upper uh, So this is the uh, petrous bone, and this is the occipital bone. Right here. So that's the petro occipital suture. Now, occipital mastoid suture is here that's attached. This is the occipital bone. And this line that you see here is the occipital mastoid suture. And like I said, I'm told that there are almost 34 suture lines in the mastoid in the uh, temporal bone. So these are just some of the few that we can actually identify on the CT scan. So with that, let me just go on to the axial sections first. And what I'm going to do is uh, I was I will not be able to use the uh, uh, DICOM viewers. So what I've done is actually stacked all the slides. And now let's see here. Oh, oh this is not working. Okay, now I think clicks will work. Okay, so look here, what is happening here? We are going inferiorly. And what is happening here? The, the mastoid cells are starting to appear. This is the um, anterior clinoid process. This is the posterior clinoid process. This is the dorsum cella. And we're going to have this uh, petrous, um, uh, the, or the temporal bone, petrous part of the temporal bone appearing right here. So let's go further down. And now what is happening here is you start to see part of the temporal bone is the mastoid air cells. And now you are going towards that. It is heading towards the petrous apex. You can see the direction and the bone starts to get a little compact here. And when it gets compact here, what do you see? You see a small little canal here. What is that canal? That is the superior semicircular canal. In the next cut, you will see that it is dividing now, okay? It's not really dividing, but it is becoming vertical. So it has two things. This, which part of it is, this, this is ampullary end, and this is the non ampullary end. Why is this the ampullary end? Because it's going to meet with the lateral semicircular canal. We'll show you later. And this is the sub subarcuate canal, which harbors the, um, the arcuate artery and provides is a direct communication between the mastoid air cells and the petrous apex. So this is the ampullary end of the, um, of the um, <clears throat> superior semicircular circular canal. And this is the non ampullary end of the superior semicircular canal, which is going to join with the posterior semicircular canal, non ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal, and become the uh, cross commune. So let me go to the next slide here. At the same time, what is happening here? Something is happening here. Somebody is opening his mouth, and that is going to be the inferior our, uh, internal caustic mutus. Now, at the same time, I want you to notice that this, this is the trigeminal depression, and this is a trigeminal eminence, and there is another depression here, and that is the metal depression, and then there was a, another elevation here that was the uh, uh, arcuate eminence. So this is the, now you can see here, this is the posterior semicircular canal, posterior semicircular canal, this, and the, um, the internal costing meters is opening up, and it's opening up now more. And this is uh, the lateral semicircular canal is coming into view. And this is the ampullary end of the lateral semicircular canal, which is going to be the ampullary end of the uh, superior semicircular canal and going to form the vestibule. At the same time, this is the, the uh, cross immune 
<clears throat> or the uh, non ampullary end of the uh, of the posterior semicircular canal and the ampullary end of the uh, uh, posterior semicircular canal, which is going to hug around the lateral semicircular canal and go into the vestibule. But note something is happening here. Something is happening here <clears throat> that this is the cruscamium. Now, here we see a lot of structures here. A lot of structures have come into view here. And what we want to identify is this is the cochlea, the apical turn of cochlea. And this is the labyrinth part of the facial nerve. This is the genital ganglion. And this here, the fact that you see here, this right here is that of the GSPN. And then this is going to be the, uh, will go on and become the, uh, is a, uh, the tympanic part of the facial nerve. Let me go down one more step. Previous one here. And you can see this is the superior vestibular nerve right here, going to the vestibule right here, lateral semicircular canal. Right. So, and this is uh, still the um, uh, uh, posterior semicircular canal, which is go down and form the uh, uh, go around the uh, uh, lateral semicircular canal and uh, join the vestibule. That's the, the, um, the uh, malleus, as you can see here. Now, we already seen the, the uh, a genital ganglion here. Remember what I told you, the, uh, the uh, tympanic, uh, the um, tensor tympani is always below, not above, always below. So you can't confuse it with the tensor tympani. And here, you can see now in one cut closer, this is the, uh, uh, the facial nerve running across, and this is the cochlea. You can see a little bit of the uh, cochlear foramen here, and a little bit of the, uh, still the uh, inferior vestibular nerve, uh, going here, and it's better now. You can see that that is a cochlear nerve, and this is an inferior vestibular nerve. But what has happened here? We are starting to see a window here, and that will be the let me see. And this is a lateral semicircular canal coming here and joining the non ampullary and joining the vestibule. And this is the posterior semicircular canal. And this was the the uh, endolymphatic sac, as I have shown you earlier. So this is this uh, split with the endosynthetic sac, which is going to open here into the this endolymphatic sac. See the opening of the endolymphatic sac. <clears throat> so here, now you can see the tensor canal of the tensor tympani. And see, this is the tendon of the tensor tympani right here, which is below the facial nerve. And this is the um, the uh, oval window which is coming into view, and this is the modulus, and uh, that is the cochlear nerve, and this is still the internal acoustic meter, the lower part of the internal. And you may be able to see just a little slit here. That is a singular nerve. See that this is the, now this is the ampullary end of the, uh, see this, this here, this is the singular nerve. Very pixelated, unfortunately. And now we are going inferiorly. This is the facial nerve right here. Just come across here. And uh, going inferiorly, you can follow the facial nerve now. This is the facial nerve. Facial nerve, and this is the posterior semicircular canal, where it has become now linear. And what is happening here? This is the basal turn of the cochlea. And you see a little air cell here. That is the round window. That is the niche of the round window. And you see a little crease here going from the round window. What is that? That is the cochlear duct. And if you follow that, you see this opens up here. That is the cochlear duct. Let me go previously. Okay, so facial nerve is right here. See, this is a facial nerve. Facial nerve. Now we're going down. Very pixelated, unfortunately, on the screen. 
it worked very well on my other PC, which is the high resolution, but here. Now here you see what is happening here to the facial nerve. Very interesting. It is going to give birth to the quadra tympani. See that is divided into the quadra tympani. See this? This is the quadra tympani, this is the main branch of that happens about four centimeters. Uh, uh, sorry, not for them, about four millimeters or so from the stylomastoid foramen. There's a quadra tympani, and this is the style uh, and this is the facial nerve right here. And something else is happening here. There's the facial nerve again. Okay, see this phenaliculus, that's the mascot phenaliculus that transmits the, um, the, um, uh, the oracle branch of the vagus, it goes towards the facial nerve and then comes out from the uh, 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 tympanomastoid uh, uh, fissure. And this is the juggler foramen. And this is the hypoglossal canal. See that? And this is the other canal, which is the condylar canal, it's going down. And what suture is this? This is the mastoid, and this is the occiput. So this is the occipital mastoid suture. And that is the styloid process. This is the temporal mastoid um, suture. This is where the uh, auricular branch comes out. This is a styloid process. And I think that will sort of. Okay. Uh, Janki, do we have any more time? Sir, we have time, sir. You can go ahead. You want me to go ahead? Okay. No problem. So uh, let's look at um, the sagittal. I think it would have been very nice if um, I could have been played it on my PC. We'll, maybe we'll give this talk in some other time. Okay. And uh, now we are going to look at the coronal. Now, what is happening in the coronal here? I, just, um, I thought I will show you some um, interesting things also about the uh, paragopalatine process and all, but I think I'll go straight for the uh, uh, for the temporal bone. That's what we are here today. Uh, but um, okay, one thing I wanted to show you. Do you know this is this is the coronal rotundum? This is um, uh, going to be the maxillary sprat. But what is this here? Follow this, just watch this, okay? That is going to become the video nerve. Let's see, watch this. See what happens here. Still big foramen here. See what happens? One, two, three. So divided into two. This is actually the video nerve and this is the platovaginal nerve. So the platovaginal nerve uh, will go into the platovaginal canal and will supply the uh, and the stretch and the calories are good in your own. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay, so this is the video nerve. Now follow the video nerve. Where is it going? Just keep on following it. Keep on following it. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Keep on following it. And you see that. You can still see it here. You can see it here. Oh. I don't know what happened. Somebody's. Okay, I think my computer again shut down. I'm so sorry. Okay, let me go back. Can we move this here? I can't see the um, slideshow, okay. Oh no.
Hello, Janki. Hello. Sir, please. I think uh, there is some problem here. Um, <laughs> I think it crashed. I'm so sorry. We'll have to redo it some other time. Okay, sir. Uh, I'm not sure why, why, what happened and how it happened. Let me just see if I can. Uh... No. Maybe we can do part two later, Jankit, maybe tomorrow. The ones I have the, um, uh, today was maybe just an acne and uh, we can do the um, uh, part two at some other time. Okay, sir. Are you okay with that? Yes, sir. Uh, we I will... don't know what the problem was with the computer. Really, it's very embarrassing actually. Okay, sir. We'll, uh, again, uh, we'll take up uh, tomorrow, same time in the evening. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't do it. Not tomorrow. I have something on tomorrow. So um, it has to be no. Monday or some other time. Okay, sir. Okay, I think maybe, maybe a wait, wait, wait. I might have got it already. Just one second. Huh? Okay, because I think there's 900 slides here. So the, no. Okay, we'll have to do it some other time. Hello, sir. Yes, Janki. Sir, I was listening to you, but partly I had to make arrangements. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we are just uh, doing the temple bone arrangements and uh, fixing the temple bones and things like that. Sure, no problem. So that's why, yeah, I was listening to the initial part, but later I had to arrange all the bones. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll talk later, okay? All right, thank you so much. Sir, thank you very much, sir. No problem.